Hi there, I'm Sivan Anley with the Santa Clara Valley Blackhawks. I'm here to explain how to run the clock here at the Fremont Ice. But before I get started, I want to explain the role of being a scorekeeper and running the score clock. In this role, you are off-ice officials, and therefore, you have to be responsible for having a very impartial game, and you are part of the officiating crew for these games. And that means that you can't jump up in excitement and cheer your team on and bang on the glass. You are helping the officials run the game by running the scoreboard and by, by running the score sheet as well. So please remember that your role is very different when you're in the scoreboard than as a fan or a spectator out in the stands. So the first thing you have to do is turn the, turn the NEVCO on and it's going to ask you a series of questions. First of all, it'll ask you if you'd like to start where you left off. And the answer to that is no. You always want to start fresh, that way you know, you've, you know the settings you've got. It's going to ask you for the model number, which is 0083261, and that's right here. Do you want, to, do you want to use the shot clock? And the answer to that is no, we don't use the shot clock in hockey. And you use penalty timeout, and the answer here is yes, we do use this in hockey. To set the time for periods, they're typically 15 minutes, and you use set time. 1, 5, colon, 0, 0, yes. And it asks you the period, period 1. Of course, period 2 or 3, depending on which period it is. Then, simply start the clock when the, re when the referee drops the puck, and stop the clock when the referee blows his whistle to stop play. Pay very close attention to the, to the referees, again, remembering that you're an off-ice official. Okay, now that we've programmed in the time, Let's add some goals. So adding goals is really straightforward. You press home score and it asks you plus one, or however many to add, one goal at a time. So the home team scores one, you do home score plus one. Guest score asks you, guest score plus one. Now let's say you made a mistake. You press guest score and it was really the home team that scored. Then you can change it just by saying set guest score to zero and set home score to two. And you can change it to any number you need to change it to to correct it to make sure the scoreboard corresponds to the official score sheet. So that's it for goals. We also track shots on goal and we often use somebody in the stands to tell us the shots on goal and send a text message over. And shots on goal are very straightforward. It's set home shots. Let's say the home team had 30 shots on goal. There's 30. Set guest shots. 20 shots on goal. Now you can see the score is 2-0, and we have 30 shots on goal to 20 shots on goal. So that's it for shots on goal. Now, let's say we have penalties. Again, penalties are straightforward. It's going to be set, home penalty, the time of the penalty. So this is the duration for minor penalties. It's 2 minutes, and press yes. Then it's going to ask you for the player, and you have to add the player's number. Now for two-digit jerseys, it's straightforward. You enter the number. For single digit jerseys, like numbers two through nine, you have to add a zero in front. So zero, three, and it's done. And now two minutes will appear on the clock for players for player number three. Now let's say the team scores while on a power play. So you need to get rid of that particular penalty. What you're going to do is home penalty, penalty clear. And it asks you, do you really want to clear, yes or no? Yes and at least clear. And now if the other team were to score on a power play, it would be guest penalty, penalty clear. And that's it. The other interesting challenge happens when you when penalties run over the period. So the, the period ends, but there's still time. So you use the penalty on-off button to change that. Now by pressing the penalty on-off button, now it's off. Now when you run the clock, and usually you run it for one minute between periods, the penalty, the penalty clock does not run down. That way you keep the same time on the penalty for the start of the next period. Now you've also got to remember to turn it back on when the penalty starts. And remember, if you make a mistake with a penalty, you can always set a new penalty. You can also, by penalty edit, so guess penalty, penalty edit, and that's an error because there isn't a penalty up there. If you want to edit it, yes time, let's say that it really should be a five minute penalty. And that's it. So all of these things can be changed. And always right beside this, 
is the scoreboard operations manual. So refer to it if you have any questions when you're sitting in here. And it gives you all the instructions on how to run, run the clock. So that's basically it for, for running the clock. It's really quite, uh, quite straightforward. You have to deal with the time, the goals, shots on goals, and penalties. Remember a couple of things about the rules of the game. Things like offsetting penalties don't go on the clock. They're only on the score sheet. So you don't put two minute penalties for the same for players when they're offsetting. And if you have any 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 doubts as to what the correct scoring is, please consult with the referee. The referee's in charge and has to make sure that the scoring and the scoreboard accurately reflect the way the uh, the way the game is being played and the penalties on the board.